Welcome to this introduction to asset tokenization and how it can be achieved within the Arrowchain platform. Before we get stuck into the details of the process, let's briefly summarize what we mean when we're talking about asset tokenization, just in case the concept is unfamiliar to you. Asset tokenization is where you take a real, tradable asset like real estate, shares of a company, or a piece of art, and then represent that on a blockchain network by issuing a security token. These tokens can then be traded, and that's exactly what the Arrowchain platform allows you to do. Now let's take a closer look at how the process works. To get started, the first thing we need to do is introduce the platform administrator. The platform administrator is responsible for onboarding token issuers, who are the entities looking to list their assets on the platform, tokenize the assets, and then put the resulting tokens up for auction. The platform administrator is also responsible for onboarding potential investors, and these would be the entities looking to bid on assets that have been listed for auction by the issuers. In order to place bids during the auctions, investors must have some deposited funds available. And so, the final role of the platform administrator is to approve any wallet top-ups made by the investors. We will show each of these functions in action as we move through the process. So let's kick things off with the issuer onboarding process. So as an example here, we've set up a platform administrator called Jason Bailey. He's not real, so don't try and email him at his address there. In order to initiate the issuer onboarding process, you can see that Jason is going to log into the platform with his credentials, and this will bring him to the dashboard within the platform. There, he finds that he has two applications available to run. One is the issuer onboarding process, and the other is the investor onboarding process. Right now, he's going to start the issuer onboarding process, then he will come to the screen where he's going to register the company that is joining the platform as an issuer. He fills in all the details of British Company Inc, and once he has filled in all of the company details, you can see that this also includes a few roles that need to be assigned within the issuing company. The company representative is Diana Black. For the purposes of our example here, this is the person from the issuing company who is in talks with the platform administrator about getting the company signed up. We also have three board members, John Adams, George Baker, and Elizabeth Clark. And finally, we have our treasurer at the bottom there, John Smith. Each of these roles will be explained in more detail as we get further into this video in terms of exactly what they do on the platform. For now, we can see that once everything has been filled in and the company has uploaded any mandatory documents, then Jason Bailey, our platform administrator, hits submit and sends the information to be verified as compliant with any necessary know your customer or anti-money laundering checks. And this would all be done via two API calls to relevant external systems. Once everything has been approved and processed, our platform administrator gets a new task, which he can see on his dashboard called Enrollment for British Company Inc. He's going to claim that, which takes him to a new screen where he can officially enroll the company on the platform. As Jason checks through the information, you can see that we have the compliance results from the KYC and AML checks that have been performed on the new issuing company. Once he's ready, Jason then hits the button to enroll the new issuer. A MetaMask window will appear at this point, and this is how the Arrowchain platform writes the information to the blockchain. Jason just has to confirm that everything is okay and proceed with the enrollment. And there we have it. Our issuing company has been successfully enrolled. Okay, great. We've got our issuing company onto the platform. Now, do you remember the roles that appeared during the onboarding process? Along with the company representative, we saw three board members, John Adams, George Baker, and Elizabeth Clark. And there was also the treasurer, John Smith. Let's take a quick look at the role of the treasurer first and see exactly what John Smith is going to be doing on the platform. So the treasurer is the person that's going to list the company's assets on the platform. And once all of the assets are listed, the treasurer is also going to initiate the tokenization of these assets, choosing which ones will be tokenized and how many tokens will be issued. And finally, they will submit proposals to the board of directors and fill in all the details of an auction. Talking of the board of directors, let's quickly take a look at what they will do on the platform. So once the treasurer has chosen an asset to be tokenized and how many tokens will be issued for the auction, they will propose this to the board of directors for review. The directors will then vote to approve or reject the tokenization request. If they approve the request, the treasurer has the go-ahead to proceed with the auction. And if they reject the request, 
the asset remains in its original state and no auction will take place. Now that we've had a quick introduction to the roles within the issuing company, let's take a look at how this all plays out on the platform. To begin the asset tokenization process, the treasurer will be the first person to log in. In our case, that's John Smith. In the dashboard, John sees an application called Digital Securities Token Issuance, and he can go ahead and launch that one. You can see that his information is automatically generated there. John can now select the type of token that he's looking to issue. The options are fungible or non-fungible. Fungible tokens are where each token is equivalent to the next. For example, fiat money is fungible as one $20 note is interchangeable with all other $20 notes. Non-fungible tokens are used for instances where tokens will not hold equivalent values, and one may be worth considerably more than the others. For our example here, John is going to choose the fungible tokens. He can then decide if the tokens fall under the category of an asset-backed security, a bond, or a commodity. And as you can see, this example will be an asset-backed security. The symbol is what the asset will be referred to within the platform. So here, for example, John Smith has entered DSB coin. This means that when the asset is added to the list of available auctions, it will appear under the name DSB coin. The denomination has been set to zero because John only wants whole tokens to be traded. If it was set to one, for example, then it would be possible to trade to one decimal place, such as 0.5 tokens or 0.1. John has also opted to issue 50 tokens at a price of 50 USDT per token. USDT is simply a tokenized version of the US dollar, with an equivalent value for use as a platform currency. As we move on to the real estate asset overview, the application is able to retrieve a list of assets from an external asset management system with an API call. Making John's job very straightforward, he just has to select the asset that he wants to tokenize here. As you can see, once an asset is selected, all of the information fields are automatically filled in with the data pulled by the API. All of the fields can be completed manually if an external system is not available. The treasurer can then upload pictures of the asset being tokenized, as well as any necessary paperwork, and finally the treasurer will hit the Create Tokenization Request button. A message will then appear to let John know that the tokenization request has been successfully registered, and John can send it for board approval. Okay, so our treasurer John Smith has submitted a new tokenization request for board approval. That means our board members will need to get involved at this stage in order to review the request and make a decision. First up is Elizabeth Clark, and once she logs in, we can see that she has a task waiting for her to view the new proposal. All of the details here are read-only, and Elizabeth can scroll down, taking as long as she needs to review the proposal. If she's happy with what she sees, which appears to be the case here, then she hits the Approve Tokenization Request button. A message will appear once the vote has been processed to let our first director know that their vote has been successfully registered. Our other directors, John Adams and George Baker, will also have received the same task to go through the same process of reviewing and placing their votes. In order for a tokenization request to be approved, the board of directors would have to vote a majority in favor of the decision. For the case of our example, Let's just say that both of our other directors also voted to approve the request in line with Elizabeth's decision. Once a tokenization request is approved by majority, our treasurer John Smith is back in action with a new task to register the board decision. All he has to do here is finalize the tokenization request. Jason Bailey, our platform administrator, also has one final task to complete, which is to accept the newly tokenized asset as a holding in escrow while the auction takes place. After this is processed, one final task gets generated for the treasurer of the issuing company. John Smith logs in to claim this final task and is now able to create the offer. Once this is fully processed and confirmed, the tokenized asset is officially listed for auction on the platform and open for bids. Great, so our issuing company is all set up and they've got their first tokenized asset listed for auction. Now we need some investors, well, at least one, right? So Jason Bailey, our platform administrator, needs to get back to work here and make sure there's someone on the platform that is looking to bid in the auctions that are underway. Thankfully for us, he's been drumming up plenty of interest and we have an example investor company ready to sign up. So let's jump back in for a brief look at how the investor onboarding process plays out. As you can see, 
This is very similar to the issuer onboarding process that we went through earlier, so we won't show you the whole process again. Jason Bailey has already filled out the information and carried out the compliance checks on Christian Swift, who is our new investor, so he can just give the information a final check and then confirm the successful enrollment. Now that our investor is on the platform, let's take a quick look at the two main activities that they are going to have to perform. The first is topping up their wallet so that they are able to place bids on assets that are listed for auction. And then, of course, they are actually going to place bids within those auctions. This is how that all plays out. Christian Swift, the representative of our investing company, is going to log into the platform. As an investor, he will see two applications available to him, one called Purchase Platform Currency and another called Subscription. And of course, the first thing that he's going to need to do here is purchase some platform currency, so he will launch that application. This will take him to a screen where he can register a source of funds. The source can either be a letter of credit or a transfer. Christian will choose which option he wants to use and upload a relevant supporting document. He will also enter the amount that he's depositing. Once all the details are filled in and he's happy to move forward, he will submit the request to purchase the platform currency. This triggers a new task for the platform administrator, Jason Bailey. All he has to do is log in and review the request, then confirm or reject the transfer. Our new investor now has funds in his wallet and can participate in any listed auctions. Okay, so Christian Swift is now ready to place a bid. Let's see exactly how he does that. After logging in, he will choose to launch the subscription application this time. All of his details as an investor are automatically filled in here, so he can just scroll to the drop-down list of tokenized assets that are currently up for auction. Once he finds the name of the asset that he wants to bid on, which in our example is the one called DSB coin that our issuer listed earlier, he can select it and it brings up all the relevant information, including how many tokens have been made available, the price per token, and any descriptive details about the asset. Christian obviously feels very good about this one, as he's decided to request all 50 of the tokens that have been made available by the issuer. Once he's ready and happy to do so, he can make the offer and he will receive a notification to confirm that the offer has been sent. He will then generate the subscription agreement, which is a contractual document that automatically pulls all of the relevant information from the platform into a preset document structure. As you can see, as Christian scrolls through here, it is a completed document ready to be signed by both parties. After a look through the subscription agreement, Christian just has to send everything off for compliance verification. In order to settle the auction, the treasurer of the issuing company will need to review the bid that has just been placed. In our example here, that's John Smith, and after logging in, he finds a task waiting for him to review Christian Swift's subscription for DSB coin. Once he opens the task, all of the information is presented to him regarding the offer, and he has a decision to make whether to accept or reject the offer. John happens to be relatively eager to get this deal done, and so he accepts the offer from Christian and receives a notification that the offer has been successfully accepted. Finally, John will generate proof of ownership for Christian as the new owner of the tokenized asset DSB coin.